Hello and welcome to another edition of the Avid Screencast. My name is Christian Förster and I've gotten so much email demanding tutorials on audio editing in Media Composer that this week we'll start a series on that topic. So today we'll begin uh, covering some basic settings and we'll continue with uh, various ways of editing audio and applying audio effects in future episodes. So let's get started with some basic settings. They are located, surprise, surprise, in the settings tab of your project window. Right at the top, there's the audio setting. Now I can't open this here because I'm recording this podcast with a, an unsupported uh, audio interface. And if I open that uh, audio setting, it will crash the application. So what I've done is I have taken a screenshot when the audio interface was not connected. And this is what the audio settings window looks like. Now there's a couple of things that you can change here. Well, now I can't, but <laughs> if you open that at home or at work, you will be able to change these things. There's the default pan, which is something that, uh, you know, I use frequently. It is now by default set to all tracks centered. That means if you uh, add a mono track to your sequence, it will be uh, centered by default. You can also change that to alternating left, right. That would mean uh, audio tracks one, three, five, and so on are left. And audio tracks two, four, six, and so on are panned to the right. Now this can bite you in the butt when multiple editors um, work on the same sequence because it is a user setting and if you created the sequence with uh, all tracks centered and the next uh, person opens it with alternating left right the audio mix will be all messed up and hopefully uh, everybody will notice right away and uh, it's not going to be too much of a problem but you know just keep that in mind the default pan only applies to audio tracks when you have not panned anything by hand as soon as you change the panning here by hand and even if you get back to to mid as it was before now it doesn't matter what anybody will have here at that as their default pan i touched the slider so it will stay the way i left it a couple of other settings here the source uh, monitor scrub and the record monitor scrub scrubbing is if you hold down the shift key and go through a sequence uh, frame by frame. It scrubs the audio and by default it scrubs one frame of audio and that's the frame that you're on, which is, you know, a pretty smart thing to do, but maybe for uh, some reason you want to uh, also hear a couple of frames of the outgoing audio and then you can change the settings here for the source and the record monitor. Okay, that's the audio settings. And then there's the audio project settings. And while the audio settings are user-based, so you change them once and they'll stay like that for you um, as long as you don't change them back. The audio project settings are project-based, so the settings are tied to the project, not to the user. Okay, a couple of self-explanatory options. The sample rate of your sequence, of course, the file format, which is probably now an MXF format for everybody. Uh, the bit depth, it all depends on what audio you're using. If you're using uh, CDs primarily and stuff recorded in 16-bit, it doesn't make much sense to use 24-bit here. Here's an interesting one. Convert sample rates when playing always if you have audio clips with different sample rates in your project, this will uh, in real time convert them and you will be able to play them in real time. Uh, that works as long as you don't try to output that to tape or something, because then you'll have to transcode. And that's why there's an option to show the mismatched sample rates as a different color. This way you will immediately notice that something is wrong and you can fix that before uh, pulling your hair out when you're trying to output that and get done and go home. <laughs> then there's the input tab where you can specify the input source. There are all your different uh, inputs. 
an output tab where you can uh, change the master gain. So if you find out, for example, that uh, the volume of your whole sequence is like 3 dB to low, you can uh, increase the master output gain to plus 3 dB. You can also change the monitor volume. And also very important is this one here where you select your mix mode. Now this is the stereo mix mode where I mix to uh, the tracks 1 and 2 for output. We can also go mono and direct out where you can patch your tracks to outputs of your liking. Also interesting is the effects tab where you can choose to bypass the clip gain, the audio gain or the real-time equalizer in the whole sequence and specify the render sample rate conversion quality. Of course we'll use high and slow because we're into quality and I mean, you know, audio uh, transcoding is not a very taxing thing to your processor, <laughs> not anymore anyway. Uh, you can disable real-time audio dissolves for whatever reason you might want to do that. I, you know, I can for the life of me think of anything, but, you know, possibly you might want to do that. And there's the dissolve midpoint attenuation where you have two different settings. One is the constant power and that uh, attenuates the, the midpoint uh, by minus 3 dB and the linear one which is the default by minus 6 dB. And there's uh, an interesting article that Steve Cohen uh, wrote about that, and I'll link to it in the show notes, where, where he goes into detail about the, the difference between the two and the practical difference as well, which is uh, always fun to know. All right, that's the audio project settings. And last not least, there's the import settings, and there's an audio tab, which is something that you should definitely have a look at we can say uh, convert the sample rate when importing um, to the project rate, which is a smart option to check if you ever uh, want to output your uh, sequence to tape or something. Uh, you can do the same with the bit depth of the audio. Also not a stupid thing to check. This one is uh, new in, I think, version 4 or something. We can apply the attenuation or gain on importing stuff, which is uh, a very smart thing because, for example, when you import CDs, they are, of course, mastered to zero to BFS. And uh, in Germany, anyway, our maximum level is a minus nine dBFS. So uh, you could check this, say minus nine. You can also. Uh, check a CD only if it's only CDs that are mastered to 0 dBFS, but if you import MP3s or whatever, they are most likely also uh, mastered to 0 dBFS. Okay, that's the audio import settings. Wow, this is a meaty show, huh? Are you still awake? <laughs> but trust me, in a minute there'll be something that uh, is actually not, not uh, too stupid to know. <laughs> Because the next thing we'll uh, go into is uh, the audio tool. Now this is for this is first of all a peak meter. The peak meter has a very low latency. Um, I don't know how it is where you work uh, in Germany. We generally use um, a ten millisecond uh, averaging uh, peak meter. And this is a zero dB averaging, so no averaging at all of peak meter, which means very, very uh, short peaks are displayed here, but not on our broadcast peak, me peak meters. And that's why it's not a very smart idea to uh, level your audio with the internal peak meter here of the audio tool. That might be different where you work, uh, so, but uh, keep that in mind uh, if you have, you know, specific ear to monitor your audio levels, use that and not the one here. Now by default the audio tool shows you the output levels. You can also make it show the input levels of connected devices. If you click up here. And then there are two funny looking buttons here with letters in different font sizes. It's a UI nightmare, I, I think. But they do their job. 
One is the reset peaks button and one is the peak hold menu button. Now to show you what the reset peak button does, I will need the peak hold menu. There are again a couple of different settings. Input settings opens the audio uh, project settings input tab. Output settings the same thing with the output tab. Peak hold is checked and I'll use infinite hold. Then play something. And as you can see, there are two little indicators that uh, show me where the highest peak was. And if I don't want to see them anymore, I press reset peaks. Couple of more options. Um, there is a calibration tone that you can play to, you know, calibrate your uh, monitoring equipment or your recording equipment as well. If you want to calibrate uh, the input, you can, you know, zoom in on your uh, zero dB mark. And then there, this is the, a very important option, set reference level. Now this is uh, set to minus 20 dB, which is probably a smart thing in some markets. Uh, not where I live. Um, I told you that we're going up to minus 9 dB. So our reference level is minus 9 dB. And now if I turn on calibrate, it will center around minus 9 dB FS. Now if you ever change the uh, uh, reference level, you might have noticed that uh, it changes constantly. If you're in a new project, uh, you will have to change it again and again and again and again and again and again. And this is because the audio tool settings are saved in the audio project settings. And as I told you, these are project settings. So with every new project, the audio tool reference level is being reset. Now, if you're like me and you're living in a country where minus 20 dB is just uh, not something that you're interested in as a reference level and you find yourself constantly changing the reference level, uh, I would suggest putting the audio project settings in your site settings. Do that by going to the special menu and opening the site settings. As you can see, there's something in there already the media creation settings because they are always pretty much the same when I open a new project and uh, I don't want to change them manually every time I open one. And now if you've changed your audio project settings and the audio tool settings to your liking, you can just drag and drop the audio project settings to the site settings window. And now every time you open a new project, it will be populated with these settings of the audio project setting. And thus also with uh, your reference level and your audio tool. Now, if you didn't know that already, uh, this uh, might be the thing that this episode was worth suffering through <laughs> for. And that is the audio tool. Ooh, now I think this was a pretty dry show and I'm sorry about that. <laughs> But uh, I hope it'll get better next week. But uh, thank you for sticking with me until now uh, on this episode of the Avid Screencast. If you like, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast at avidscreencast.com. We can also watch past episodes, which are more colorful and stuff. Um, also, don't forget to subscribe on iTunes or just by clicking the RSS feed. And if you have any comments or suggestions like, oh my God, this was a lame show, I fell asleep, um, <laughs> then uh, don't hesitate and email me at mail at avidscreencast.com or just comment on the website for everybody else to see. <laughs> um, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash avidscreencast and on Facebook, facebook.com slash avidscreencast. And if you'd like to know what kinds of things I do in my day job, check out editguy.de, where I promote myself. Once again, thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>